So yeah, my name is Kunal Anand. My name is Kunal Anand, and uh, I am uh, deputy director for Vos Ashmani Time School. I and I also head up uh, the areas, uh, postgraduate and uh, undergraduate areas within the school, particularly shore-based uh, maritime courses uh, come within my remit. Uh, just to talk about uh, Solent University a little bit, obviously. Uh, in some form or the other, Solent University has been around uh, for about uh, 160 odd years. Uh, we've got uh, investment in uh, in the later part of the last decade of about 100 million pounds on the campus. Uh, we get uh, at any time, we, we've had uh, up to 11,000 students on campus with uh, 100 plus nationalities and, and a good chunk within the university uh, students are uh, uh, are, are non UK. Uh, we've got close to 170 undergraduate courses of different kinds. Uh, plus, we do lots of uh, foundation degree and top up courses, as well as postgraduate courses like the one we are talking about today. Uh, next slide, please. Right. So, how do we help? The students obviously uh, we are student centric uh, at the university uh, all our efforts are all about the students so we are increasingly uh, working with students for their workplace uh, skills that they need uh, working with the employers uh, to fill the skills gap uh, deliver distinctive courses which again we always uh, map it out with the industry as to what the industry needs, real world learning. Uh, we are very inclusive as part of a diverse and inclusive culture that we promote uh, within the university. And uh, we've got various services, which uh, I'll probably talk about more in detail later on, so that uh, our students continue to experience uh, a real world learning and something that will benefit them. Uh, in their careers moving forward. Next slide, please. Uh, slightly more, so this was the structure that we had uh, quite, uh, quite recently, but a slight change now, but uh, I'll talk you through it. Uh, so Vosash My Time School sits outside of, uh, of the normal faculties. The remaining three faculties obviously uh, are at the, in the process of being divided into uh, two schools each or two departments each. So we'll end up having six departments uh, and Vosash Maritime School as part of it. So we obviously, other than Maritime, our university has got expertise, uh, quite a bit of expertise in uh, creative industries uh, such as uh, uh, video, uh, and um, gaming and so on. Can I ask uh, everyone to just mute their mics, please? Uh, I keep getting some sort of a interruptions in between. Thank you. Uh, so business and law is another uh, area that we quite thrive in within the university. And obviously we got quite a niche market within sport, health and social sciences. Uh, those of you who follow cricket and football. So uh, we work very closely with obviously uh, the Hampshire uh, Cricket Club, which is uh, obviously in the uh, Division One of the county cricket uh, and uh, within the uh, AGS Bowl, and and obviously we have uh, at the moment Premier League football club in um, in Southampton, which may not be for much longer, but uh, we work very closely with them as well as as the university. Uh, moving on, please. So coming back to our school, uh, we are the only higher education institution uh, in the UK that provides a full service of portfolio in maritime education uh, from entry level courses all the way to PhD. Obviously the main levels, uh, you might, if you're not aware with how UK uh, further higher education system works. Uh, so level four is uh, where is the first year of our undergraduate degree five is the second year, six is the third year, and level seven is the postgraduate qualification. And obviously PhD 
leaves to a level uh, eight. Uh, we are the only maritime institution in, in the UK uh, to have that whole full range. Many of the other education providers, uh, further education uh, providers, which are affiliated to universities uh, on the side to provide that provision, but uh, don't really do that in-house. Uh, so we offer degree programs in various uh, areas, maritime business being one of the niche areas, port operations, uh, yacht design, and so on. We also offer obviously credit programs. Uh, we wouldn't be a maritime institution if we didn't. Uh, so we've got navigation, so deck side credits, uh, engineering credits, and electrotechnical credits, both for uh, UK seafarers as well as uh, National. We have courses uh, for uh, senior certificate of competency, chief mates, masters, uh, second engineers, chief engineers, as well, uh, quite popular with uh, particularly from the subcontinent. Uh, within those courses, we also offer a chance to top up to a full degree, uh, not just a diploma. Uh, more about that later if you have any questions on that. Obviously, we do the mandatory safety training, such as uh, a lifeboat, firefighting, medical, CPD courses, such as uh, 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 helm, uh, ICDES, um, and uh, security officer, safety officer, designated person assures, and so on. Postgraduate maritime qualifications, like the one we are talking about today, MSCs uh, in maritime business, in logistics, and shipping operations is the one which we're talking about and a uh, whole lot of other work within uh, maritime consultancy and research. Uh, next one, please. Right, I'll, at this point, I'd like to hand over to uh, Dr. Captain Nadeem, uh, who is the course leader for this course, and he'll tell you more about this course in detail, but I believe there is a poll first. Right. Uh, th thanks for uh, the intro on the university, Kunal. And uh, uh, so there's a poll on uh, what is the most important benefit that you look uh, from a course. And, uh, and we have this poll and then we'll have Captain uh, Dr. Nadeem coming in and, and talking about the course uh, in detail. Look forward to a few more answers. We've got about 60% of you who have answered. Manav? May I request everyone to keep your mic uh, on mute? All right, we've got about 75% who've answered and I'll stop the poll. I'll end the poll and share the results. And uh, so about 88% of you, uh, the most important uh, benefit that you look from a, this course or any course that you would like to do is your ability of the course to get you into a sure opening, a sure job. 8% um, of you are looking to enhance the knowledge um, and 4% uh, uh, better understanding of the current job. Thanks, thanks for your answers and uh, over to you, Captain Nadeem. All right. Thank you very much, Gaurav and uh, Kunal. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. I'm Captain Nadeem. Uh, I'm the course leader for this course, MSc in Shipping Operations, uh, where we'll be discussing the profile of the course, uh, some key benefits, structure of the course, and how this course uh, actually operates, and what, what are the key benefits of attending this course. Uh, we run this course from September every year. Uh, the next course available starts from 25th of September this year, 2023. Uh, considering that this course is done alongside your work so that you don't have to leave job to attend the course, we have spread it over a period of 24 months so this course can be completed in two years' time. The delivery mode is uh, all online distance learning, so there are no scheduled lectures. Uh, there is not even attendance required at the university, so you can be working, and alongside that, in your spare time, you can continue uh, to study on this course. 
the assessments have been managed quite carefully not to increase your workload too much at the same time making sure that you acquire the necessary skills and demonstrate that you have the pre uh, necessary knowledge uh, out of the content. Uh, we have basically trimmed the assessments down to 10 coursework, which of course includes the final research project in the form of the dissertation as well. Uh, now, one of the most important aspects is the course fees. Uh, the university charges the course fees per year. So if anybody is a UK student, the course fee for the first year is 4,500 uh, UK sterling. And for an overseas student, uh, it is 7,650 uh, for the first year. Uh, the next year fees are much similar. Uh, and if there is a change, it's only a minor change uh, to keep in line with the uh, cost of living changes as well. All right, so over to the next slide, please. Uh, the course structure works uh, over a period of this module or in this unit, uh, considering that some of you may not have been to a university recently, uh, consider. We, yeah, I guess we're not able to hear Captain Nadim very clearly. Yeah, I think we've lost him almost. Yeah, we did. Can you, uh, can, Gaurav, can you see me? I can, I can see you. I think you're logged in from two different devices. I can see you from one device and hear you from another. Yeah, that's what I did in the end to resolve the issue. Uh, oh, so we've actually lost. Uh, I'll, I'll, as we wait for uh, uh, Nadim to log back in, um, yeah. he's probably having some network issues. Um, there are a couple of questions, yeah, which we could take in the which were in the chat window. Uh, yeah, that. sure. Uh, can you? Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll uh, take the questions. Um, is this course IACS accredited? ISCS. I don't know what they mean by that. Uh, uh, the, the classification society. Uh, I don't know. International Association of Classification Society. Is that, is that what you meant, Joshua? ISCS. Yeah. Okay. IX. Uh, no. Uh, Nadim is back in, but yeah, I'll answer yeah. that question to begin with. We, we've got uh, IMRS accreditation of this course. That's yes, the yes. professional body that uh, accredits uh, this course. But uh, I'll, I'll let... Uh, Nadi take over and, and, and uh, talk you through the modules and uh, apologies for this, everyone. We'll, we'll come back to the questions uh, at the end. Uh, thanks, Kunal, for covering. Uh, apologies for the slight disruption. Uh, so I was talking about the first module. Uh, it is, as I was saying, it is about getting you in line with uh, studying at this level. So the necessary skills required to study at this level. Also, most importantly, uh, give you the necessary skills uh, to perform self-managed study as well. Uh, in addition, this module, of course, also allows you the opportunity uh, to look at or focus on development of your personal uh, uh, skills, personal development planning. So you can plan ahead, you can plan for the foreseeable future, your short-term future, you can plan for the next five years, next 10 years, as to how you want to shape your career. So this module gives you clear guidance in how you will be planning your future and how you will be planning your your career. So this basically, the first module is all about getting you back on track as to how best a student should learn at this level seven course, which is a master's course in, in, in UK context. Uh, the next module, which will start, uh, gets you in touch with the maritime context and the legal process. Now, uh, considering that uh, 
all of us are related to shipping industry or majority is related to shipping industry uh, and also considering that some few may not have been to uh, uh, an educational setting for a period of time and also that uh, you may be in a specific role uh, and you may uh, be focusing on a specific area only we start off with the maritime context basically uh, to allow you to broaden your horizons to see what is happening within the maritime industry in general and what sort of main areas of interest or main areas uh, support the uh, maritime uh, knowledge in general. And also alongside that, we will be talking about uh, the legal process, uh, which is a very important aspect, which covers the uh, environment, which covers the uh, contracts of carriage, which covers the uh, uh, seafarers' rights, which covers the uh, uh, insurance uh, issues as well. So basically, in a nutshell, the legal process and the maritime context as a single module uh, is put together within the first year as well. Now, a lot of your work at this level, at the MSc level, at the master's level, uh, requires you to undertake research uh, and also engage with investigations because we can learn ourselves and we can learn from events which happen around us. So the third module within the first year, organization learning through research and investigations, this gives you uh, uh, the not just the necessary skills, this basically gives you more than the necessary skills and basically prepares you to research at the highest level. So you can engage in conducting research, you can engage in conducting high level surveys, uh, you can engage in analyzing them, you can engage in uh, getting the results out of them. At the same time, you're also able to uh, look at the incidents which happen in the industry or within your organization and how the organization learns through research and how the organization learns through investigation of the accidents or investigations which have been happening within the industry or which basically have been associated with your own organization as well. So the first year basically puts you on track in making you fully aware of what the maritime context and legal process is and also gets you ready for the study, gets you ready for this research, and most importantly, gets you ready uh, in terms of applying the knowledge that you acquire, the knowledge you gain from the research and investigations, and how your organization and yourself are gonna be supported with that. Uh, this then takes us to the year two units where we uh, focus heavily on risk and safety management. And also starting from the second year, uh, you engage in a research project which is going to run for a period of 12 months. This basically is going to uh, uh, be referred to as your dissertation uh, at this level, at the master's level. Now, the main modules, four of them, uh, three in the first year and three in the second year are 30 credits each, and the project which is in the second year is worth 60 credits. Uh, to achieve a master's qualification in the UK, uh, under the UK uh, Quality Assurance Agency requirements and the higher education uh, requirements, uh, a student needs to achieve 180 credits. So once you achieve 180 credits, uh, your MSc is due to you, and dependent upon the grades you achieve, you may complete the MSc with the distinction, you may complete the MSc with the merit, or you may complete the MSc with a mere pass as well. So the three uh, grading regimes, pass, merit, and distinction. Okay, over to the next slide, please. Okay, so uh, how are the teaching and learning organized? Uh, well, first of all, I think there should be a poll at this stage. Yes, I'm just taking the poll. Um... It should be on your screen. So are you looking to do this course while you're sailing or while you are maybe working in an office? Uh, I mean, what's your, how are you planning for a course right now? So I think that's one of the things that a lot of people uh, are, uh, may look at Captain Nadeem is that you know, they plan to transit uh, to a new job maybe in the next two, three years, and they want to plan uh, a few things. And they want to plan their upskilling, uh, upskilling themselves, and they look for. Yeah, I will, I will explain the. I'll explain the significance of this also later on. Thank you. Right. I will end the poll and share results. So, eighty-seven percent of them are looking to do the course while they are sailing or. Maybe a couple of them are already ashore and, and, and they're looking to do a course while they're doing something else. And, and how, how, how is that possible, please? 
Okay, uh, so back to the presentation then. Uh, so on this course, as I already mentioned, this is a distance learning online and a self-taught course. So the content is provided to the students uh, in the form of uh, online content on the university portal, university website. And uh, each of the unit has got its own designated pages, uh, which you may refer to equivalent of various books or multiple books, which are going to be provided to you. Uh, in addition, of course, you will have access to our online uh, books on the library as well. So wherever you are in the world, you will access our digital media from the library as well as from the uh, unit pages. Uh, for each cohort, we do appoint a student representative as well, who brings the views of the cohort to us. Uh, and in addition, uh, we would like the students to work collaboratively with the others as well, uh, because you might have certain skills, your colleagues might have different skills. So overall, you basically complement each other, and we work on the system of study body student representation. And there's a lot of interaction expected uh, on this course uh, through basically engaging uh, through online forums, discussion forums, uh, uh, creating the case, uh, and uh, posting uh, your reflective journals uh, at various stages in the course. So it's all about having the necessary interaction, uh, discussing with each other, and at the same time, uh, making sure that you uh, sincerely uh, share your own views and also uh, be able to comment on the views of the others as well. So it's basically a cross discussion, uh, talking about what you feel uh, you know or understand and uh, reflect on that at the same time, reflecting on what the others uh, believe or understand as to what they know about a particular situation. Uh, in quite a few cases, there are video presentation or clips available as well and presentations to clarify uh, some key aspects. Uh, so the content basically is fully provided through a course handbook, uh, which explains the significance of each and every unit. Uh, in addition, there are going to be structured questions and answers from the lecturers uh, to support the learning of the students and support mainly the skills development. Uh, the focus on this course is more about skills development uh, alongside uh, the development of knowledge as well. So to that extent, we have got uh, unit lecturers assigned uh, to each of the course, and there are some other members of staff who will be able to help as well. Uh, also, we recommend that the students basically uh, point themselves or associate themselves with an industry mentor uh, who you believe has got significant knowledge uh, in the areas of study that you're engaging with uh, or who you believe uh, within your organization can help you through or even beyond or outside your organization, uh, you are free uh, to choose one or more mentor who can assist uh, with you. So while you're studying on a particular unit, you have got ongoing interaction with the unit lecturer assigned to that module, uh, your mentor assigned to you on that module uh, or for the course as well. And uh, there will be interaction with myself who's the course leader. And I've got a practice of making sure that I drop in almost on every module, uh, if not earlier, at least every two weeks to check with the progress, uh, check on the progress with the students and to make sure that everybody is on track as well. Uh, to make sure that the learning is uh, progressing well, uh, not only that we keep an eye on the uh, discussions that you're having, we basically start to test you in various modules in the form of formative assessments, which basically help you uh, gain confidence and display your ability that, right, I'm able to answer uh, content at this level, I'm able to deal with scenarios uh, at this high level, uh, and that I'm getting close to being assessed formally uh, at this level. So these formative assessments basically are an opportunity for us to see where you stand in terms of the knowledge and skills that you have gained. And also it gives you an opportunity to gauge your own depth, gauge your own level as to how much you have learned uh, in the process uh, of learning in this particular unit. So formative assessments basically help you uh, develop your skills further before we go to the summative assessments, which is the final assessment for that module, which will of course generate the grades, which counts towards the MSc as well. So discussion forums, uh, uh, of course, and the wiki pages uh, help you reflect on your learning, help you reflect on scenarios uh, which you are discussing at any stage in time, and furthermore, uh, help you share your understanding with the others who can then reflect on what they believe uh, could be the strengths and weaknesses in your understanding, and you have the same opportunity. You can question the understanding of the other. So that way, basically through mutual interaction, interaction with the lecturers, interaction with the course leaders, we help each and everyone to develop the necessary skills and develop the necessary knowledge as well. Okay, over to the next page, please, thank you. 
So basically, uh, the course can be uh, studied uh, while you are at sea effectively. Uh, basically, uh, internet is required uh, and internet is not required 24-7. A lot of materials have been set up in such a way that your total reliance on internet is not always uh, expected. Uh, and at sea, of course, we know that the internet speeds are not always the best possible. So we allow you opportunities to download the materials at a suitable stage. And with some access to internet, uh, you can continue to study. Or even if you have no internet at sea, you can still continue to study as well. There's a lot of flexibility uh, in terms of the timelines in the course. Uh, and uh, once, once we embark on it, you will see uh, how flexibility uh, allows you to develop uh, your skills and knowledge even while you are sailing at sea. Ashore, of course, with a good internet, uh, the pace of progress uh, is, is, is uh, uh, quite normal, uh, but uh, rest assured, even while at sea, it is not going to be hindered at all. So we do suggest a, a pace of learning. We do suggest how many hours should be allocated to a particular topic. We do suggest some specific timelines, uh, but the uh, formative assessments and the exercises and the discussions, uh, those timelines are basically advisory only. However, the final submission, which is the summative assessment, uh, that basically is linked to a standard or particular deadline. And again, that deadline is only relevant if you have no circumstances uh, where you are struggling to submit. If you have circumstances where you're struggling to submit, then for the specific students, even the timeline for the final submission may also be extended based upon the circumstances which you are experiencing. Thank you. Over to the next slide, please. Okay, so the main benefits of the course, uh, it is more about skills development. It is more about knowing what is going on within the maritime industry around you and what are the current challenges which the industry is failing, facing and where the industry is failing as well and what kind of resolve can be put in place uh, to shape uh, a course out of that problem, out of that difficulty and particularly relevant to your own organization as well. Uh, so what's happening in the maritime industry? What's happening within your own organization? What can you do uh, as a support to the industry? What can you do in particular to support uh, your own organization uh, to get out of any difficulty or, or how to shape the future even better as well? Uh, so ideally, uh, we are looking at the students developing the ability to reflect with the reason. It's not about having arguments. It's a, the ability required is uh, to reason effectively with effect, effective reflections. Uh, you are able to put your point across and you are able to justify your point of view across. Well, remember, there is always uh, one point of view and there's always a counter point of view. Uh, and that is natural in society. That is natural within the industry as well. Uh, all we want you to develop is a skill uh, to reason your own argument argument to reason your own point of view effectively, fully justifiable, fully reasoned uh, with full confidence. Uh, so, and based upon the analysis, uh, reflective analysis, which you have the skill of through following this course. So this course does give you the knowledge also, but that's only tip of the iceberg. The most important thing is how we put that knowledge to use and how we are able to support the organization and the maritime industry uh, with that knowledge uh, that we use. So the coursework that we set for you uh, basically uh, is going to be incrementally challenging. Uh, we would like you to work at the highest level. We would like you, we'll stretch you, we'll push you to work to that highest level as well. Uh, and that basically uh, will be possible once we put the constraints on you. We will put word count constraints. For example, you have got to put your point of view across in say 2000 words, 2500 words, 3000 words like that. Also we'll put pressure on you to complete something. So for example, we a reasonable period of time. Uh, so, for example, to make a presentation, uh, oral and video presentation, which lasts only 10 minutes, but which puts the point of view across very effectively. And similarly, uh, in terms of completion, so if you're required to prepare a presentation, uh, we'll give you a challenging timeline, give you a week or give you a number of days uh, or for an assignment or report or an essay, we'll give you a few weeks to complete. So there is pressure and you get used to the idea of working under the pressure as well. Now, the most important thing 
uh, which adds uh, edge to your profile uh, is the ability to have the MRS chartered technician status. Of course, you still need to apply for it, but this MSc provides you a direct pathway or this MSc is one of the uh, uh, a route or one of the vehicles uh, through which applying for the charter technician status is straightforward. Uh, and on that note, this course is fully accredited by MRS Institute of Marine uh, Engineering Science and Technology. Uh, we have their full support. Uh, we can advertise ourselves associated with them. They advertise themselves associated with Solent University. So course accredited by them and gives you the uh, ability and gives you the uh, chance uh, to apply for the chartered technician status as well. Right, then if we can move on to the next slide, please. Okay, so team, uh, we have got a, a very uh, dedicated and a professional team at uh, covering this MSc. Uh, Kunal, of course, uh, as the deputy director, uh, heads the area of study and under his guidance and his leadership. Uh, myself, then, as the course leader, I'm responsible for making sure that the accreditations remain in place, uh, that the content remains current, uh, and that the uh, availability and accessibility to students uh, is always up to date. In addition, of course, I lead the dissertation project. Uh, I will guide you through the research as well. So I will guide you through the study skills. I will guide you through the research skills, and I will also uh, help you through uh, parts of the uh, accident investigation or incident investigation and also the legal process as well. So within the course, uh, these are the main things that I will be addressing. Uh, my colleague, Captain Steve Kelsall, he will be responsible for uh, upskilling your personal development planning, and he will also be looking at risk and and safety management. Uh, our colleague Susan Harland, uh, uh, she will be responsible for uh, working with you in the maritime context, and she'll also be supporting uh, the risk and uh, safety management uh, module uh, in parallel with Steve as well. So that's the team. Uh, in terms of the team, carefully selected, uh, the necessary skills, all with the relevant background and the academic uh, background experience, academic experience, and academic qualifications to able to give you the required knowledge and skills at this level. Okay, can we move on to the next slide, please? Now, in terms of the entry criteria, that's very important because uh, to maintain the quality of the course, we've got to make sure that the right delegates are uh, allowed to enter the course only. So basically in the UK, proceeding towards a master's qualification uh, requires a bachelor's degree, which basically at honors level, uh, the grading of the degrees in the UK is a grade one, uh, then grade two split into two one or a two two, and then there is a pass only as well. So basically we expect a relevant honors degree in any of the maritime studies, discipline, shipping, business law, or other appropriate or relevant professional qualification or experience. For example, somebody with a business qualification uh, associated with performing work in the maritime industry uh, is also going to be acceptable uh, to us as an entry criteria. So as long as a minimum grade of two by two in that qualification uh, or relevant qualification is available, then student is accepted. Now, knowing that the marine uh, professionals usually may not hold a degree qualification, we have other pathways available as well. So those individuals who hold a master, a chief engineer, uh, certificate of competency, uh, or in the old system where we used to call them class one master or class one chief engineer, uh, our STC to management level qualifications, we have include the chief mate, uh, the chief and the second engineer as well. So if somebody holds those qualifications, which are the professional qualifications and, uh, uh, and linked with their professional experience, we will be able to accept them. In addition, those students who through a UK setup have completed a higher national diploma, uh, which in short is the HND uh, or a foundation degree uh, by the officer cadet, cadet route uh, in an appropriate discipline, which be uh, deck, engine, uh, or electrotechnical uh, uh, discipline, uh, they can also be accepted onto the course, provided there is management experience available to them as well. So either a degree in the relevant discipline, uh, or either senior qualifications, seagoing qualifications, master, chief mate, chief engineer, second engineer, with the relevant professional ex and management experience in the seagoing capacities, or holding a higher national diploma or a foundation degree with the relevant management experience. So those three options are available. In addition, we expect that the delegates attending the MSc uh, will be in employment or at least had been in employment 
deployment in the recent past. Most importantly, uh, for the option two and three as the entry criteria, we expect them to have experience at the management level as well. Now that's the entry criteria. Now, in addition, of course, if the English is not the first language of the students, which in case of overseas students is going to be uh, the case, exceptions being Australia or New Zealand or Canada, uh, uh, provided the student has been an indigenous uh, resident there. Uh, if English is not the first language, then the university expects the students uh, to demonstrate their ability or proficiency at the English language, and there are multiple options available. I'm not gonna repeat uh, what is written on the screen. Uh, so when you start to apply for the course, uh, it will be made clear to you what options work best for you, and you can choose which route of the English skills demonstration you want to uh, acquire and what certificate you can provide to the university. Uh, we do check the originals or certified copies of the originals at the time of enrollment to make sure that whatever you have claimed in your application and on your CV uh, is in fact the case uh, and make sure that, uh, uh, especially for overseas students, that uh, certified copies are uh, available uh, to provide to the university. Right then, over to the next slide, please. Thank you. Okay, so here's a poll at this stage. If we can... Uh, Sure. Um, I guess one of the things why people want to do this course is to transition in a short job and there are various uh, um, roles which a person can get into after doing a similar course yeah. or this course as such. So which kind of role interests you the most? Um, and this is to the audience and you may please have your um, answers uh, in, in, the, in the poll window, please. All right. We'll wait for another five to seven seconds and then we will end the poll looking for a few more answers. Okay, I'm ending the poll and sharing the results. So about 38-38% of the persons are looking for roles into commercial operations or ship management, followed by logistics and then into port operations and which we could probably refer to when a few more questions come uh, to us in the, in the Q&A session. Okay, thank you, Gaurav. So basically, uh, study wherever you are, uh, and basically materials are available to you online as well. Okay, so at this stage, I'm gonna pass on to uh, the Deputy Director Kunal Anand, who's gonna share some more uh, 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 work that is done at the university or why Varsosh is chosen as the place of study. Over to you, Kunal. Thank you. Uh, thanks, uh, Nadeem, for all that uh, comprehensive uh, details about the course. I'm sure the guys uh, found that very useful. Obviously, we'll take the questions later on, but uh, let me tell you a little bit more about Varsosh, everyone here. Uh, why choose Varsosh? Uh, uh, it, it's a no brainer, one of the oldest maritime schools, not just in the UK, probably uh, around the world. Uh, we got uh, one of the best reputations and, and, and we don't rest on that laurels or reputation. Uh, we continue to build on it. Uh, uh, next slide, please. So obviously, uh, we, are, we are world, uh, one back, please. Oh, okay, this is the one, correct. Uh, established in uh, 1946, uh, in the current format, obviously, in various other formats, we go back to early 1900s. But as as we know, Warsash in the current format uh, was just established just after the Second World War. Like I said, uh, uh, the only nautical institution higher, with the higher education status uh, with a full service portfolio. So by time education from cadets all the way to master's degrees and PhDs, as we talked about training for professional courses in shipping, oil, gas, and, and super leading in super yacht uh, sector as well. Uh, again, world leading in research, uh, including uh, international collaborations, Erasmus funded projects, uh, EU funded projects, and, and, and various other international 
research projects that uh, uh, path breaking projects that the the was I has worked in and consultancy as well we worked uh, and continue to work globally in in very niche and cutting edge uh, areas so all was I lecturing staff are either seafarers uh, we've got uh, about 50 uh, master mariners or chief engineers working within the school in in the and they all got their respective academic qualifications as well and if they're not uh, seafarers, then they are either uh, uh, naval architects or, or uh, uh, maritime lawyers or so on with their relative expertise in, in various areas. Next slide, please. Yeah, so why choose Vosash, a world leading maritime university uh, with, with a global reputation. We, we provide exceptional academic support. So within Vosash, we, we have uh, uh, at university, we have got dedicated areas. Uh, so in Learning and Teaching Institute, which is there to provide academic support to students as well as the academics. Uh, excellent academic results and attainment rates uh, within, within Vosash and university. State of the art facilities, obviously you don't get to come, come to Vosash uh, as part of this course uh, because it's online, but within the online domain as well, uh, our Moodle or online learning platform called Soul and Online Learning is 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 also one of the world leading uh, platforms that you're going to be studying on, where we can con uh, share various contents and and, and interactive uh, learning of of uh, many kinds. And uh, UK's only university, obviously, that offers maritime credit career progression courses onto, and, and we at Vosash particularly are quite passionate about. So uh, 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 Dr. Captain Nadeem and uh, myself uh, uh, have been uh, sailing previously, and we do realize that sailing is probably, is a good start, is a lovely career, but it's also got to have a progression into the shore-based careers. And, and as you mentioned in, in the poll, most of you are looking to do that, and obviously that qualification, that academic qualification that this course provides, and there are cert certainly certain, certain other ones as well, which give you that extra edge uh, when you move ashore uh, and to continue that progression in, in shore-based shore domain. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so people who we work with are who's who, uh, and these are to name a few, and. Uh, the list would be probably going on to two pages if we were to list everybody we work with. Uh, but as you can see, uh, it's who has who of uh, uh, maritime industry, uh, Anglo Eastern, BP, uh, Carnival, Chevron, CMSC, GM, uh, Holland America, Exxon, Mobil, P&O, uh, uh, to name a few, Princess Cruises, V ships, uh, the list can go on and on and on. Uh, Shell, these are the customers we work really very closely with. We've got strategic partnerships with many of these uh, shipping companies. Next slide, please. Uh, other, so we've got MSE shipping operations that's listed there as online learning. That's part one of the course that we do. Uh, some of the other maritime, shorebed maritime courses that we do our uh, BSc Honours in uh, Maritime Management. That's a top-up course. Uh, so if you have a diploma or a foundation degree, you could do that course. Uh, quite two niche courses in, in BSc in Maritime Business and Shipping and Port Management. These are, again, undergraduate courses, uh, three-year full-time courses to study, shore-based maritime programs. BEng in your design and production, again, one of the... Uh, biggest and niche markets uh, so 80 percent of the uh, yachts currently being produced in various parts of the world are uh, solent and wasash alumni uh, we're talking about this course but other than this course we we got uh, two other mscs uh, international maritime business and international shipping and logistics uh, they are one year full-time courses to be studied in the uk again uh, if you're looking to get academic qualifications in those respective areas to, to move ashore. And I think 
there were a few questions and we'll come to them later on as well either or uh, whether you want to study two year part time online msc course as this one or if if you want to take time off from work for one year and come and do a full time course the pros and cons of of both the courses but the at the end of the day you're still getting a masters qualification which is uh, same but obviously in slightly different different areas where we can talk about more about those areas uh, later on and i'm sure there'll be some questions on this as well next slide please again uh, quite active in in research and con consultancy uh, work uh, we've got uh, we've done previously and and all of this is in public domain uh, and you can access this uh, so uh, extensive work in in uh, uh, algorithms for collision avoidance uh, autonomous shipping uh, and cutting edge on on seafarer fatigue uh, sea traffic management uh also on the social side of things uh, uh seafarers welfare gender equality and multinational crew so lots of uh groundbreaking research that we have done and internationally acclaimed which is obviously helping the shipping industry moving forward and getting safer uh, greener and also for the welfare of uh, of seafarers like uh, ourselves and yourselves uh, next slide please uh at this point i'd like to hand back over to to gaurav uh, to cover through some uh, uh important logistic uh, points over to you uh, gaurav thanks sure. um thanks for the presentation captain nadeem and konal uh, very informative and uh, we all knew about uh, the, the university as such but when we hear it from you you know then then, then it becomes even more impressive Uh, the the pedigree and also so thank you uh, so much um in terms of uh, uh, in, in terms of what cn beyond could do how we could assist you is um so once you have decided that you would like to uh, say go for this course so this is about the forms need to be filled they need to be submitted in a certain way um the english proficiency examination needs to be given in a certain way the reference letters need to be there so we can help you in all those things and uh, lies from with the university to get your admission through uh, after that uh, if it's a distance uh, if it's a full time course then you would need help in terms of visa as, as well where we could uh, assist you and if you're going to get uh, looking for an accommodation the university can also assist you but we are also um a partner to a few companies which can help you in the accommodation and we can help you with your um cvs and sops if required for various courses so essentially uh, we, we could assist you in various ways while you are applying for this uh, course uh, later on um next slide uh, please tejal right i guess that's pretty much it what you 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 could connect with tejal uh, her email id is given and the phone number is also given which we will also put it in the chat window as well for you to um, check um we are now open for question and answers so uh, tejal maybe we can stop sharing the slide and we can now start on the q and a's and i will take uh, the questions from the chat window uh, as such there have been we are a few questions which have come through and which i will start uh, taking in so i guess we did start with a question from joshua and his question was whether the course is iacs accredited but i guess he had modified or clarified later on uh, and he was asking whether this course is ics accredited and i think it was in the following uh, chat so so is uh, you had mentioned about i imr set uh, that that's the body which accredits it uh or partners but is it also accredited uh, well through ics as well please i i can take that uh, so uh international charter uh, ship brokers is ics uh, this particular course is not accredited by them but we do have uh, the other two msc courses the full time msc courses are uh, both ics as well as silt uh, cilt uh, chartered institute of uh, logistics uh they they both uh courses are accredited by ics but this being slightly different 
and more technical type of a course uh, is appropriate, we thought, uh, for IMRS uh, accreditation. Thanks, uh, Kunal noted. Um, can the course be attended at campus? Also, is there a post-study visa? So I guess this is a distance learning course and uh, uh, so a post-study visa is not uh, provided for this, but there are other courses which are one-year courses uh, which are into MSc in ship, uh, shipping business uh, uh, and for which uh, these are full-time courses wherein a campus uh, uh, attendance is mandatory and followed with the you can get study board visa as well. Um, is, is is that correct or you would like to add on this uh, Kunal or Captain Nadeem? No, you, you, you spot on uh, uh, Gaurav. Uh, so, uh, so, so uh, distance learning programs uh, do not qualify as, as uh, for the post-study work visa program. Uh, a full-time taught courses are the only ones which uh, qualify for post-study work visa. And hence, uh, as you read, rightly mentioned, the two other MSCs, one in uh, international maritime business, and the second one in international shipping and logistics, they both, if you do them full-time uh, one-year course here in, in, in Southampton, uh, you, they would qualify for post-study work visa on those bases. Uh, as I mentioned, there's pros and cons of both uh, studying distance learning part-time as well as full-time course, uh, which we can discuss uh, at length uh, if required. But uh, the main thing is, obviously, we will have... Uh, in, in following week's uh, webinar on the other two courses as well. Definitely, if you're interested, please please do uh, dial into those. But uh, mainly speaking, uh, obviously, different areas of study slightly. Uh, so logistics, business being the focus of those courses, these are more based on uh, shipping and, and uh, operations side of things, management side of things accident investigation, technical side of things. Those are uh, slightly different areas, but also uh, since we're talking about this, you've got to think about obviously when you come study here one year full time, you're taking one year time out from work uh, and, and, and putting your life on hold and, and obviously all of that uh, and living expenses in, in the UK and so on. That's one side of things. Uh, whereas in here, uh, although you're not on campus, but you are studying part-time while you continue to earn and work. Uh, and, and, and there are obviously no living expensive, traveling expenses and so on. Uh, and, and these are the kind of things I think uh, any, all of you who are planning to have your further studies, higher education qualifications, master's qualification, whether with us or anywhere else, uh, that's what you've got to keep in mind. It's, it's a, a balance. Uh, either you take time yeah. out, and, and, and do that or, or you continue to work. Uh, I'm getting some, some, and some, okay, right. I think that's that. Uh, next question, please. Right, I, I guess there were a couple of questions from Asif and uh, Joshua as well, wherein they were asking for difference between distance learning, a little bit of pros and cons on distance learning and uh, full-time and which you have um, in a way clarified as well. Um, so so thanks for, for that. Um, also- uh, Can yeah. I just come in uh, very quickly to add to that, obviously there's uh, also questions about uh, what whether the degree is different or uh, does distance learning has value uh, under UK QA uh, and, uh, and higher education institutions there is absolutely no difference between the qualifications that you get by distance learning online or or full time study your certificate doesn't say that you've achieved MSc shipping operations through distance learning or you've achieved MSc in international maritime business on campus learning, there is no differentiation at the award. They're both level seven award at the same level and employers to see uh, them at the same level. Now, uh, it is also important to see, obviously this different mode of study, obviously in distance learning, you do it over a longer period while you're working, you've got to have slightly more commitment, self-discipline, to make yourself study uh, and, and engage with the lecturer. Obviously we check in with you if you if you think we are you're not showing the right level of engagement and so on. Uh, but as, as I said, you continue to work. 
uh, during that time. So obviously that is a good balance you need to have while working. It's not easy to, to take time out and study during your 24 hours or, or seven day week. Uh, on the other hand, when you come study here full time, obviously you put your time on hold, expenses are higher, but you are only here to study and, and obviously then to studying and, and that's quite focused uh, and a tight program that, that you have to follow. Now, I also want to add here is obviously as employers, uh, either or, it still shows commitment uh, from the candidate towards uh, bettering themselves, getting that extra knowledge, getting that extra qualification, whether you're working at sea, which is also a challenge, or you're taking time out from your careers to come and study on campus. Either way, it's a commitment, a big commitment that you're shown towards your progression, towards making yourself a better uh, 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 skilled person, which, which the employers will always value. I mean, to make, take my case in point myself, obviously. So anybody would be having a chief mates license, master's license, all of us will have that because we are sailors, we will all have six or you'll have second engineers or chief engineers license. Uh, but what makes you different when you're shifting for probably a job CVs, we, we get uh, in my role, we get job, I recruit and we get job CVs from 30, 40, 50 odd people for a job. And I only have to shortlist, say about three or four people for interview. What am I looking for? What the employer is looking for is what, what have you got extra? So you've got that, so you've got that drive to get that extra master's degree qualifications. You've studied, you've got that extra skills and knowledge. You've got that higher education, critical level thinking, report writing skills, analytical skills. I know that very quickly looking at the CV. As a master mariner, I know all of you are master mariners or chief officers or so on. You got you bring yourself those skills anyway, but that's probably constant for all 30 or 40 CVs. So what, what extra are you bringing? So that's, that's quite important uh, to note here. Yep. Thanks a lot, uh, Kunal. And I guess that also answers your question from uh, J.S. Walia, Asif, uh, uh, Captain Vijay, who was asking whether we get a degree at the end of the program, which, which also Kunal um, uh, clarified. Um, so, so a few of the questions were clarified in, in what Kunal said. Um, there's a question from Joshua, and he's asking whether if a person has done his HND, uh, from UK or probably the COC is from UK. Uh, do they still need to give IELTS? Uh, as far as I remember, uh, that, that's, that's right. Uh, uh, can you please put some light on this, Kunal or Captain Nadi? Uh, I would need to double check. I think there is, if you have a previous UK qualification such as HND or if you get a COC from the UK, I think uh, the IELTS requirement. Uh, do not apply, but I will double check and, and we'll get, get back to the individual, uh, probably via email or so on. But let me double check on that. I'm 90% I'm, I'm sure, but not 100%. Not oh, okay. Okay. Joshua, uh, either uh, me or Tejal, we will get back to you on, on this particular uh, question, please. Um, Jadeep is, is requesting for the fees Again, uh, Captain Nadim, you, you did mention the fees in one of your slides. Can you please uh, repeat that, please? So for UK students, it is uh, for, for first year, 4,500. And for overseas students, 7,650 UK students for the first year. Right. Yes. So 7,650. And, but it might, uh, as, as, uh, as uh, 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 Captain Nadim just mentioned, so it's a, it's a, that amount for the first year and second year it might go up uh, minutely as per the the cost of inflation uh, which is standard uh, across the sector but that that would be usually no more than two three percent increase all right okay um this is a good question from nisha uh, what kind of exposure can we expect during the distance learning course okay so uh, yeah, I'll let you take that, please. Okay, uh, right. Uh, 
On the distance learning course, the thing is the interactions are very significant with the other fellow students and with the lecturers and the course leaders, as well as the industry mentors. Uh, so you can choose an industry mentor yourself. University appoints an industry mentor also as well. Uh, and uh, you have access to uh, the things happening in the university. We keep our content up to date. Uh, so even the stories or the news which you perhaps may not have heard, uh, we basically allow you access to those in full detail. Uh, and the exposure basically is about making sure that at this level, you are engaged in performing a critical analysis of the topic area, that you are engaging and reflecting on what are the pros and cons uh, or what are the positives and negatives of a given situation and you're able to draw conclusions from it, and then you're able to make decisions based upon those conclusions as to what is the course of action which you or your organization might take in a given situation. So in addition to gaining knowledge, uh, the exposures that you mainly have on this qualification are more about uh, the skills, necessary skills that you need to develop uh, when working at a senior level. Some people have those skills naturally. Some people may be in a very good position to acquire a job right. based upon their natural skills, but quite a lot of us have to fight to get into a particular right. position, have to basically demonstrate our skills to get into that position. And with this qualification, it very easily uh, allows you to acquire those skills by the time you complete those course uh, without even noticing. Uh, towards the end, you will notice that there's a significant difference in your performance, especially in terms of critical analysis, decision making, drawing conclusions, and applying uh, the content in the right way. Can I also just add, uh, very rightly put, uh, the, the, uh, the other issue, obviously, of what you, it's all very current that you, you study, so the, the uh, effects such as when, when you're studying and, and incidents like ever given happens, uh, you, you would probably be in incorporating that into various your reports assignments or you might be required uh, to comment on those things and obviously you learn through your peers as well those who are on the course they might be from various sectors and through their interactions and interaction with your lecturers uh, and we might have uh, input from the industry directly coming in as well uh, so yeah it, it's all very relevant and, and all very current uh, and, and very uh, interactive to give you the the, the necessary skills. Uh, next one, please. Right. I guess the next one is from Moses, uh, Captain Moses, and he's, he has three questions. Is there an age limit towards taking the course and being employed afterwards? Are the employment opportunities for candidates over 45? What are the employment opportunities? And does the college help with employment and completion of the course? Uh, again, I can take that. Uh, obviously, no age limit to learning, uh, Moses. Uh, you continue to learn. Uh, uh, even at our age, uh, we are learning. Uh, I'm sure Captain Nadeem and Dr. Captain Nadeem will agree with me. We, we continue to learn. We never stop learning in this life. Uh, and that applies to higher education and MSc as well. Uh, so there's no age limit to, to studying. Obviously, job is another issue. Again, uh, 45 is, is, is not uh, a, a very ripe age and we have employed uh, seen people employed into the shore based role in, in their 40s even in their 50s uh, when they want to come ashore uh, yeah uh, earlier is better but obviously you've got it's it's again for employers are looking for the right balance isn't it you've got if you're too young then you don't have the necessary experience and and if you're on the more riper side of the age then, then maybe they probably won't have that uh, working uh, output, uh, that long working output that the employer may be looking for. But uh, yeah, 40 is definitely a, a good age to be coming ashore even, even in early 50s, I would say. Thank you. And there's a third question there as well. Does the college help with employment and completion of the course? Okay. Well, college has, the university has uh, uh, different departments who assist to help uh, students uh, uh, acquire the necessary skills to uh, complete their CVs more effectively, uh, develop skills on interview as well. Uh, so direct help if you say that, right, oh, I'm, I'm going to pick up the phone and call an organization, right, employ this person. No, it doesn't work like that. Uh, basically, we basically help you acquire the skills and gain the qualification. 
and help you shape your application and shape your CVs in such a way that they basically uh, are more impressive compared to uh, some standard applications or CVs. Yeah, and, and, and just to add to that, uh, uh, we if if you have uh, 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 interview coming up or 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 to like you say to shape your CV or if we have contacts uh, which we can pass on to you if there are job openings that we know of uh, within our contacts uh, we will definitely share them with you. And also we will write you an effective reference as well, which goes yeah. a long way in impressing an employer uh, in in securing a job as well. There is one more question from Joshua stating the aluminia discount. Is that applicable? Uh, yes, alumni uh, discount is applicable if you only got a full uh, honors, bachelor's honors qualification. So if you completed a le full level six program, then you, you get that discount uh, when you move on to level seven study of MSc. But uh, I do not believe at this stage uh, diploma uh, holders uh, are applicable for the or can uh, avail that discount. Unfortunately, okay. this. All right, thank you. So, are there any more questions? Uh, does anyone has any question to ask? Nisha has a question. Are there any scholarship available? Uh, uh, Good one. Yes, there are some scholarships available uh, depending upon, uh, they are not uh, a huge ones and there are not a lot of scholarships available, but there are scholarships available, whether you uh, are eligible for those scholarships and whether they apply or whether you're able to get them is not a certainty, but there, there, there are various uh, student scholarship and bursaries which are allowed uh, or are, are there on, uh, within the university not usually directly applicable to overseas students. Uh, some of them are, and also many of them are not applicable to online courses, but uh, yeah, we can explore more uh, on the website or if you need any help to see if you qualify for any, uh, we can definitely check that out for you. All right, thank you. There's one more question from Rohit uh, stating that we cannot apply only after master license for the operational level? So, yeah, uh, what we say is if, if you've got a diploma, uh, if you studied in UK, you probably have a higher national diploma uh, when you studied your uh, for your management level qualification. So if you studied for your chief mate and master course uh, in the UK or equivalent uh, elsewhere, uh, and as long as you've got the management experience of, of sailing as a chief officer, uh, or second engineer equivalent, we will uh, consider your application for this course. What we, what uh, if you're just uh, opt to the watch license holder, uh, which is the uh, the first COC or equivalent, and no management experience is way we would think that you are uh, slightly underqualified to join this course. Well, Rohit, in this case, you can do one thing. You can just mail it, uh, mail your uh, certificate to us. We can verify it with Captain Kunal and Captain Ati. Uh, I am just scrolling through the questions myself as well. Uh, there was, yeah, there's, there's obviously uh, about, there's some other question previously as well. Uh, how is UK job market and so on? Uh, it is quite good at the moment uh, as, as uh, 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 Captain Dean will tell you uh, uh, all of our uh, graduates or postgraduates who completed this course have uh, either have already been in a shore based role or are able to secure a role as somewhere in, 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 in the maritime industry in, in, in different roles uh, and post, post Brexit obviously uh, UK market is much more open to to internationally, for, uh, to any nationality as per se. And, and obviously there was obviously a downturn during the in COVID and, and that's now evaporating and employers are realizing that uh, are, are hiring again. So yeah, UK job market is uh, is quite good and, and substantial. Obviously you can 
after this MSc, you can still apply for UK jobs. Uh, even though you might not have a post-study work visa, it doesn't stop you from applying for jobs in the UK or elsewhere. But uh, if you do a full-time course, obviously, then you are eligible for post-study work visa as well. So uh, various different routes. But yeah, in balance, uh, it's very difficult to say how a, a job market works. But uh, in, I would say on balance, it's, it's quite good generally at the moment. Uh, so if you are having an Indian chief, chief mate license, I think, uh, it's J.S. Walia saying, can I do a master's year free from UK? Uh, slightly on the side question, but uh, unfortunately not. Uh, what you need to do is a full, you could do a master's COC from India, uh, from UK, sorry, but you'll have to do a full underpinning knowledge of chief mate and master course uh, if you want to do a, and then you can, uh, once you've completed that course, you won't have to do a chief mate orals or uh, anything. You can go directly to your master's course, but you'll still have to complete uh, underpinning knowledge for both chief mate and master in the UK if you want to apply for master's, uh, UK master's license. Nisha has a question. Is work visa yeah. available in this? No, uh, unfortunately not, as I mentioned uh, during my presentation. Uh, Online and distance learning courses uh, currently do not qualify for posted work visa. Uh, if that's the route you're looking for, then uh, a full-time master's course like international maritime business or international shipping logistics is the route you're looking for. Uh, uh, unfortunately, this course doesn't uh, qualify for posted work visa. But like I said, uh, from the very beginning has been repeating, uh, there are pros and cons of, of uh, both distance learning and uh, part-time course versus a full-time on-campus course. It's, it's just what your circumstance and why, what your priorities are, uh, which course uh, is better. Again, uh, we can help you to judge that. I'm sure uh, uh, Gaurav and C and Beyond team can help you decide that as well. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, speak to to us or them, uh, and we can we can probably help you guide you through as to which which courses is better for you. At the end of the day, obviously it's your decision, but uh, yeah, based it's quite quite a lot of variables where you where you where you choose your course. Well, uh, Captain, I would like to take a poll in between this. Will you be interested to attend this course? This yes, not maybe. So Joshua is another question. I'll I'll take that as as yeah, the poll is going on. Uh, when is the webinar for other courses? I'm looking for one with ICS accreditation. Yeah, so those are the two other MST courses, Joshua. Uh, they are both ICS and CILT accredited courses. We don't have a date for it uh, yet uh, for the next webinar, but. Uh, uh, Watch this space, uh, be in touch with C and beyond. Uh, we would likely have it in in, in next three or four weeks. Yeah, Kunal, if I add to that, uh, usually uh, there are uh, open uh, online sessions available, uh, virtual sessions, uh, and I think we should keep uh, C and beyond advised of those dates, uh, and there are multiple sessions per year. That's correct. Thanks, thanks for reminding us. Yes, so we have virtual open days uh, for the university uh, for postgraduate and undergraduate provision uh, and uh, we, we can point you in that direction as well but they are more generic about uh, other courses and obviously there's there's focus on the course that you're looking for I think we had one uh, last month uh, but yeah there are there will be probably another one in June but we will definitely have a webinar as well So there is one more question followed by that. When are you planning to enroll for further? Sorry, uh, sorry, what was the question? Uh, so I was talking the about question. the poll question. When are you planning to enroll for further? This year, next year, not sure. Oh. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. As you do the poll, Sejal, I'll, I'll take the question. So, yeah. uh, well, you would like to know more about international shipping and logistics. I see that. Or MSC, uh, that's from Captain Agicha. Uh, yeah, we will, like I said, we'll have a webinar of, of those courses for sure in detail. There are web pages you can probably access on, on the university website, which will give you quite a bit of detail about those courses. Uh, and all of the postgraduate courses, whether it's uh, this one, which is MSc Shipping Operations, Distance Learning, or those two courses, uh, they all start towards end of September as there's a welcome week and the actual study starts uh, in the first week of October. That's usually uh, the academic cycle that UK uh, runs on. Thank you, Sejal. So there is one more feedback question which I like to ask. Were your expectation made? I guess I'm not able to launch that. As you do that, uh, Tejal, I just uh, would like to thank everybody who's who's attended. And, and like I said, uh, thanks to C and Beyond uh, and Tejal and, and, and Gaurav for organizing this. Uh, and obviously, if if you have any more questions, feel free to contact uh, C and Beyond or, or Captain Nadeem or myself directly. Uh, there's our contact details are available. So uh, feel free. I know it's it's uh, we've all uh, particularly uh, Captain Gaurav, Cap, Captain Nadeem, myself. We've all taken that jump uh, at some point in our careers to move from from sea to shore. Uh, it, it's a uh, a big decision uh, and and obviously getting that qualification now doesn't have to mean that you you move ashore immediately it's that your qualification is still there with you uh, obviously if it doesn't get too dated at some point you can continue to sail uh, as you get this qualification but it just gives you those necessary tools and obviously you are, if you want to continue sailing that gives you that that slight edge uh, in your career uh, going forward uh, and I would say it's more than a slight edge. Uh, it, it's it's higher education skills like critical analysis, critical thinking, uh, reflection, uh, academic writing, all of those skills. Your deeper knowledge of every topic uh, that you study, uh, those those will always remain with you for the rest of your life. Thank you, everyone. So if you have any questions related to qualification, you can directly mail uh, education at cnbeyond or me, tejal at cnbeyond.com. I guess I'm not able to launch the poll. It, it has got hand. Uh, so are there any more questions or... Um, I get that. Captain Nadeem and Kunal, thank you so much for giving such a wonderful information. I, uh, Captain Gaurav has left. Okay, he had some important meeting. So uh, I'm the one who will be ending this webinar. No worries. No, thanks. Thanks for your uh, for organizing this stage as well. I think it was uh, well run and I hope uh, our attendees uh, gained uh, some uh, useful insight. Uh, like I said, uh, Happy to to do. Uh, we'll probably do another one for the other courses uh, in next yeah. few weeks. Surely. And thanks, uh, thanks, Captain Nadim as well uh, for all his uh, valuable input. No, oh, thank you very much, Kunal and uh, team at CN Beyond, Tejal and Gaurav uh, for the for this wonderful arrangement. Uh, and uh, let's hope that we are able to assist the uh, requirements, uh, assist the students who are interested in taking the course and uh, uh, help them upskill and gain a suitable qualification. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody, for participating. Thanks. Thanks. Take care, everyone. Bye for now.